When the team at Lovable claimed that Webflow is officially dead, the design community was a bit shaken, some even <laughs> outraged, but I think that we do need to look reality in the face. AI is changing how web designers work. And even though I love Webflow, I do think that we need to look into this seriously. Not because I'm afraid AI is going to take my job, but rather because I'm wondering whether there's a better, more effective way for me to do my job as a web designer. So in this video, we're going to look into Lovable, see what it does well, see what not, and then conclude whether it's a legit alternative or a threat to Webflow. So what is Lovable anyway? Well, their website says it's a superhuman full stack engineer, which can basically develop things for you just by using a prompt. And looking at their builders hall of fame, people are actually building quite cool things. So these are experiment with PS5 JavaScript library for visual arts. And uh, yeah, they're creating some, it's pretty cool to create something like this, like an interactive 3D element just from a prompt that you can embed in your website. What do we have here? So here he built a shape recognizer. He's drawing a shape and it's turning into a 3D object. That's pretty impressive. Okay, I like that. All right, so let's give this a try. I'm going to put in a prompt, build a landing page for a tech company that does real-time golf analysis. Name of the company is Forecaster. Their brand color is green. Let's see what happens. So it's starting up. It's going to reason and think what would be the right page and what would be the right things to build. And then it's going to start writing some code. Now this does take some time, all of this code writing. And uh, while some people find this exciting, I find it quite boring. So let's fast forward. A few inches later. Okay, so it's been three minutes. Let's see what we got here. We have the forecaster page, precision analysis, every swing. We actually got like a nice image here, super related to golf. We've got these analytics. He really figured out like a nice visual and a layout. Looks actually quite good. Let's scroll through this. Actually looks very impressive. Also has this tiny hover effect as we're scrolling through this. This looks like a solid, you know, solid design, like nice slick interactions here. Request a demo. What's your skill level? That actually is quite impressive. And this is actually, we can go ahead and open this up because this is already published. Um, so let's see this here and let's see if this is actually uh, responsive. So you can see we've got this here on the Lovable app. Very nice. Let's try to check if this is responsive. Yeah, this is even responsive and with the mobile menu here. Well, the mobile menu is not amazing, but still, I would say this is quite impressive. Now, to be fair, Webflow also has their AI builder from a prompt to get you to something, and we can discuss about which one gets them to a better quality. But the question is, now that it's here, what are we going to do with this? Obviously, this is just kind of like a something to begin with. What happens if we want to edit this? So first of all, Lovable tells you here, you can refine this and customize. You can send this to GitHub if you want to publish it and so forth. Now we can also click here, edit, and then we can click some of these elements, for example, the button. And then if I want to, in this case, I can, I see that I can change, you know, the, the margin on the sides. I thought I might be able to even change the color, but it looks like I can't really change the color natively. Let's discard this. But if I wanna make some kind of changes, I'm going to have to write a prompt. So let's actually ask it to replace this visual with some kind of like a three JS element, something interactive. Let's just see what it would do with this. So replace hero image with a three JS uh, interact golf element. Let's see what would happen. So this is probably going to take a couple of minutes as well. So let's start fasting forward and see what happens. A few moments later. Okay, so we got build unsuccessful and something is just not loading here. So we can just click try to fix it and let's see what's going to happen. A few minutes later. Okay, so it seems that this is still not loading and it seems like a lot of <laughs> the interaction with these AI coding tools is just try to fix this error. So let's say site not loading, please fix it. A few inches later. Okay, seems like I ruined something. Never mind this. 
Anyway, I think that building from a prompt, whether it's with Lovable or with Webflow is actually not a real use case because in real web design, you have to work with your clients on the content. You have to plan the sitemap. You have to take the design to customize it and build the visual assets. And you'll usually do that with Figma. So let's actually go and work on a real project and see how Lovable is doing on an actual project. So here I'm in Figma and I have this landing page and I've recently built this landing page in Webflow. And there's actually a full video that you can see me building this in Webflow. It took me two hours to fully develop this. And let's see if I can do this quicker using Lovable. Now in Lovable, you can actually see there's a Figma import here. And if I'm going to click it, basically is asking me to use a builder IO Figma plugin to do this. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to select this page. I'm going to go here to the plugins in builder IO. I'm going to try to export this into Lovable. However, it's actually going to tell me that this page is too big, right? It's over 3000 pixels and it's, it's just not going to work. And it's asking me to just export a smaller page. And actually this is not like a huge page. So we're not going to be able to do it this way. I'm going to try something else. I'm going to just export this as an image because I can see that I can also attach images here. So I've exported this as an image and let's see what it can do. Obviously it's not, it, it's going to be difficult because you know, you have here text on the images and probably it won't be able to get the visual done right. But let's see how Lovable deals with this. So I'm going to take this homepage and I'm just going to write here, develop the attached landing page. Try to stick to the original design as close as possible. Let's go ahead. It's probably going to take a few minutes to run the code. So let's fast forward and see what we're getting a few minutes later. All right. So a few minutes in and let's see what we're getting. Um, okay. It's not exactly the same colors right here. We had a black color here. we got a green background. It did recreate this golf element here and animated it, which is quite nice. Uh, the buttons also turned them into an arrow arrow while there wasn't actually an arrow. Um, change the bento box here. Okay. So there are definitely some things here that do are not super accurate. Um, this is nice that we already have the, um, you know, the carousel, the accordion working and animating. So that's actually quite nice. Let's see what happens. Okay. So we don't have, for example, the image here of tiger woods. So let's see if we want to upload the image. So let's try to go ahead and maybe attach the photo here. And I'm going to say, uh, use the attached image uh, as the profile profile photo of Tiger Woods. Let's see if we would understand this because I don't see a, another way to upload an image to here. A few moments later. Okay. So it's been like two minutes and it did work and it did replace the image, but this is already something where I'm thinking that's actually a problem. You know, if in Webflow, I want to replace this image, I simply double click it and, you know, replace it with a different asset. But here I'm going to have to wait two minutes every time I want to replace an asset that already is a little bit troublesome. Now let's see, for example, if I want to change the look of this button, which here we need to have this kind of like green gradient. So let's try to edit. And if I click on the button then let's see what we have here, um, I do have the font weight. I can choose like if the, the font, okay. So I can edit the font from here and the margins, the color does say inherent. What happens? Okay. So this is the color of the text. I guess maybe this is the background. Yeah. And it doesn't support gradients, I guess yet. So let's discard this and let's try to um, basically tell them for the uh, CTA button, make the background green gradient like in the original design. Let's see what would happen. 
six and a half hours later. Okay, so two minutes later, and we did get it to change into a gradient. But I do have to say that, you know, compared to in Webflow, I go here and I, I just have like a very simple UI for the color and to, to fine tune the gradient. It, it, it's not really ideal to tweak designs using prompts. How do I get the, the exact green I want? Am I going to now specified color codes? Doesn't seem very, very practical. Now, one more thing, for example, let's say I want to change the hover animation, right? So let's say this button, I go into the hover state here in Webflow. And let's say on hover, I want to have a little bit more padding on the sides, right? So we have this kind of an interaction, but let's also animate it. So in Webflow, I'm gonna go here into transitions and add transitions to the padding. Well, let's say 300 millimeters. Okay, so let's say I want to have this interaction. So I'm gonna go into lovable and okay, let's say for the CTA button, add a hover animation, which makes the padding let's say 3x bigger, the side paddings, I guess side padding, three times bigger, uh, animating over, I guess, 300 milliseconds. I don't know, it's, it's, it's difficult to say when you're just writing it, right? In Webflow, I could just fine tune it, see if I like it or not, it just takes a second. Here, let's wait now two minutes and see what will happen. Three days later. Okay, so two minutes in, and it did create the animation. Look, I really like the fact that you can just write what you want and it will figure it out, but it's not, it takes a lot of time and it's not a great way to fine tune it, right? If we wanna make it faster, if I wanna make it smaller, if I wanna make it bigger. Now, one more thing that I'm thinking about is in Webflow, hey, now we need an extra page for this website, right? We click add a new page. Let's say we have an about page now, right? about page and we can just start bringing in content in here, right? Into the about page. What happens in Lovable if I need to add an extra page? Let's do add a new page to the website and about page. Let's see what would happen. Three weeks later. Okay, I've created a new about page with information about Forecaster. So you did edit into the navigation and I can click it and we have a new page here with already a little bit of an information. But I guess how do I, okay, so I guess I can switch the pages from this drop down menu here, index about. Um, okay, that was pretty slow and tedious way to create a page. I already see that while the initial build is quite fast, making sure and fine tuning this is going to be very slow. Every request I have to wait for like two minutes and then reload the whole thing. And what I'm thinking about is I'm going to deliver this to a client and expect them to make changes to content using a prompt every time they want to change the headline. Or what about when we got a lot more context like a CMS, we need to manage the content here. So this is where we are right now with Lovable. All right, to conclude, first of all, building from scratch was pretty impressive, but to be fair, Webflow also has launched their own build from scratch using an AI prompt, so that's not super unique. I do think that being able to create interactive, very difficult to develop stuff like 3D elements and WebGL animation using a prompt is amazing, and I would love if Webflow added something similar to that. That being said, when it comes to fine tuning and managing assets and content, I think that this is far from being usable for actual websites. I mean, I don't see myself delivering, the, uh, delivering this to a client who needs to prompt and wait just to replace some text and images. And it's not an ideal user experience. So I feel like Lovable is probably great for building apps, but for website and especially for complex content reach websites, it's definitely not a replacement for Webflow. Now, at the end of the day, I'm probably going to use Webflow for the main build and use Lovable just to add like custom code effects or elements when I need them, uh, no doubt. This is an exciting time to be a web designer. And let me know what you think in the comment, what your verdict is.